The first reading comes from Zechariah, the 19th chapter. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading the psalm responsively. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your words. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The second reading is from Romans, the seventh chapter. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that I do it, but sin dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh, I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. Now if I find it to be law that when I do want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from the body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At this time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such is your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by the Father, and no one knows the Father, the Son, except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Holy God, give us grace and open our hearts and minds to hear your true and living word, Jesus the Christ, who will transform our lives. Amen. Now, how heavy is this glass of water that I'm holding? Guesses? M- m- you know, I don't know what, six ounces? Five ounces? Maybe half a pound? Right? Okay. From my perspective, the absolute weight of this is irrelevant. It all depends on how long I hold it. If I hold it for a minute or two, it's fairly light. If I hold it for an hour straight, its weight might make my arm ache. If I hold it for a day straight, my arm will likely cramp up and feel completely numb and paralyzed, forcing me to drop this glass. In each case, the absolute weight of this glass does not change, but the longer I hold it, the heavier it seems to me. Our worries, our frustrations, our disappointments and stressful thoughts are very much like this glass of water. Think about them for a little while and nothing drastic happens. But if you think about them a bit longer, you might feel some noticeable pain. Think about them all day long and you will be completely numb and paralyzed, incapable of doing anything else until you drop it. Well, there's a bunch of stuff to unpack in this reading today. Jesus is talking about this generation and children playing at wedding and funeral games, and he's talking about John and himself and the varied ways in which they were perceived and received by others. And then it's about wisdom and infants and yokes and burdens, and he's all over the place, it seems. And we may find ourselves wondering, well, what is he getting at? And what, is he making any sense at all? Part of our confusion is that we aren't there. We can't hear the tone of voice or even see who Jesus is referring to. The story is missing the beginning Matthew 11, 1 through 15, Jesus has been visited by John the Baptist's disciples. John is in prison at this point, and even John is having some doubts about whether Jesus is the guy. Is he the one, Are you the, or do we look for another, is what John's disciples asked. This is a burden that they have been carrying, and it's causing them some pain. Are we following the right guy? Jesus says, go tell John what you have seen. The blind receive sight, the deaf hear, the poor have good news brought to them. The context here is that Jesus is telling the the assembled crowd that John is like Elijah, a prophet, and people should listen to him and his message of repentance. John's message of repentance and Jesus is to stop seeing this world as a competitive zero-sum game. You need to see it anew. You need to change your mind. You need to repent. You need to see it with God's eyes that the world is good. The world is a gift to be enjoyed and shared. The world is cooperative and generous. Jesus starts in on this this generation stuff. That's a quaint way he has of pointing out the Pharisees who are always following him around and trying to find something to stick him with because they really don't like the fact that he's got all these crowds following him and they're not paying much attention to the Pharisees. (laughs) He calls the Pharisees children 
who are playing games, who are going through the motions of religion without actually feeling or being, having any real participation. And these Pharisees do nothing but complain about John's austere lifestyle and Jesus' way of eating and drinking with the undesirable people. They avoid the call to repentance of both John and Jesus. So Jesus mocks them. He mocks the Pharisees by saying that God has hidden the truth from they who think they are so wise and intelligent and revealed it to the ones who simply repent and follow and believe. Then he tells the crowd that his yoke is easy. Remember here that the Pharisees are sticklers for like 600 plus rules for daily living. They're so sincerely uptight, as we used to say back in the day, they are so uptight and they're quite proud of themselves, snooty even, of how they are so religiously observant. They are harsh in their condemnations of people who don't follow the rules that they, wait, that they do, and they're openly contemptuous of people who don't measure up. They're the only ones with the right opinion about everything. Know anyone like that? Have a few moments of your own like that? Yeah. Jesus is saying it's simpler his way. It's simpler than that. His way, his yoke is not burdensome like all these rules that the Pharisees have. His way is gentle and humble of heart. His yoke is easy. And the word easy is krestos in Greek. And it means good. His way is good and kind and useful and gentle and benevolent. His yoke is easy. It's easier to be gentle and humble as we go through life. We don't need to be the enforcers of the rules. We don't need to play at being religious. We don't need, we just need to live a life humbly and gently and kindly. We don't need to be the ones who have the right opinions about everything. There's the wisdom. Wisdom is found in the doing. It's so simple that even a child can understand it. It's the ones who are wise and intelligent that miss it. What's the old Nike slogan? Just do it. The yoke that Jesus offers is his teaching, his way of life, his way of being connected to God. It is not burdensome like the rules that the Pharisees have, but it's life-giving. He is inviting us, the weary, to learn from him. He is not a tyrant. He's not demanding, yelling, conniving, arrogant, egotistical, bullying, or bombastic. He is gentle and humble of heart. To take his yoke is to be yoked to, to be connected to justice and mercy and compassion, a life of freedom and joy, a life of humble service, free from the need to prove ourselves free from worries, free from frustrations, free from disappointments and stressful thoughts, free to set down our burdens. An escape, a fruitless, unwise way of living. Wisdom is found in doing this. What heaviness do you carry? What things have been said to you or done to you that you find hard to forgive? What do you need to set down? What burdens are making you ache or numb or paralyzed? Are you worried about the world? the country, the state? Are you worried about friends, relatives, loved ones? 
Are you frustrated by the way that people talk about each other, the ways that they divide us? Are you disappointed in leaders, courts, or businesses? Are you stressed about money, illness, or time? Jesus says, come to me. Live in this new way. Don't worry about those things that you can do nothing about. Do what you can for others. Trust that the ripple effects of your good acts will ripple out. Psychologists point out that it is in our very nature that when we see an act of kindness, it affects us. We in turn want to be kinder and gentler. It also matters what kind of response to kindness that people observe. If we see kind people being praised or rewarded, we are more likely to pay it forward ourselves. This is the power of modeling, the kind of change being the kind of change that we wish to see. Carl Jung, the psychologist, says that if we build a social norm of collaboration, cooperation, and generosity, it in turn will help us solve even bigger societal problems. Jesus says, come unto me, live in this new way. Don't worry about that which you can do. You know, don't worry about that which you can individually do nothing about. Do what you can for others. Build a social norm. Be, make being gentle and kind and humble of heart the new normal. Because when you set your heavy glass of burdens down, it encourages others to do it as well. When we stop sniping and complaining, it encourages others to stop. When we stop being divisive and looking down at that other party as being an idiot or foolish or stupid, it encourages others to stop doing it as well. And won't that give us all a much needed rest? Amen.